Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be part four in a practice problem Python series for interview prep or test or quiz review. Uh, this series is assuming you have a basic fundamental knowledge of Python. I have created a tutorial series on this channel. If you're unfamiliar with the basics, you can go ahead and check that out. I'll leave a link. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and dive into these problems. These are going to cover more advanced loops and logic scenarios and are very similar to questions I've been asked before um, on Python during interviews. Problem 10. We want to build a bridge that is parameter goal long in meters. We are given a number of one meter small lengths of steel. We are also given a number of five meter large lengths of steel. Create a function that returns true only if we can successfully build a bridge exactly the goal in length. So you're going to be given parameters of small, large, and goal all as integers and you only want to return true if you can build a bridge that is exactly the goal in length. If you'd like to take a crack at this before we look at the solution together, I recommend you pause the video now. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and take a look at the solution together. Okay, so to start off for this problem, we're going to go ahead and define a function that we'll call build bridge. And just like we were told, we're going to accept parameters small, large, and goal. And uh, right away, an easy check we can do to just make sure that uh, we have enough material is do if large times five, right? So that's how many meters we have of material um, in with large segments, plus the small value is greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to the goal, then we have at least enough total material. So we know if that's not the case, we can return false because our, our large segments and our small segments combined are not even enough to get um, to get to the goal. But then we have to start doing some actual advanced checks because it's not just simple enough to say, well, we have enough material so we can do our goal. Because remember, if you have enough material but you end with a large segment and you don't have enough small segments to make up the exact value of the goal, then you actually can't build the bridge. So to start, let's just go ahead and check another easy scenario and say if the small segments alone are greater than or equal to the goal, we can return true. Because that's saying we have one meter building blocks that are enough material. So even though we could use some larges, in this scenario we know we have the building blocks required. So then the second scenario is going to be a little bit more complicated because now we actually have to check that our large times five is greater than or equal to the goal, but not just the goal. It's going to be the goal minus the small pieces because we're saying if the large is is times five is just greater than the goal, that doesn't really help us because the goal could have a remainder. It, it might be too far off of a multiple of five, and we don't have enough small pieces to cover up for that. So we, at, we put an and statement in here and say the small is greater than or equal to the goal divided by five's remainder. And so to, to get a remainder in Python, that's this uh, percentage sign. That's actually the, it's called the modulo or something crazy like that operator. Um, but in Python, that gives you the remainder. So we're saying if the goal divided by five remainder is less than or equal to the number of small blocks we have and the large number of blocks times five is greater than the goal minus the small blocks in that scenario we also would be returning true so there we're checking that between large and small together we have the correct uh, um, number of blocks to build the bridge and so other than those two scenarios, we actually can return false. And you should be able to iterate this. Uh, you can run this function as many times as you want to test the scenarios, and this should catch all of them. 
So let's go ahead and just do a few now. So let's go ahead and print build bridge. Let's say three, one, and six. So here's one where we should be able to build it because this one big piece is five and then we can add one of the ones for six. Then let's do print build bridge. Let's do something with a lot of pieces, 53, one, 58. And in this scenario, we have exactly the correct amount, right? We have 53 one segment pieces, one five segment piece. So it's gonna be an exact. And then let's do one that uses just, cause you can also have zeros of small or larges. So, okay, that'll be our, oops should probably have done that. My syntax is all goofy. Alrighty. Mm, let me just grab a few other scenarios real quick. <coughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and run this and we can actually talk about the solutions that we get. Oh, I build bridges. There we go. So, Looking at this, this these should all make sense. One five block plus one one piece of, of steel can make six total. One five plus 53 can make 58. You can use nine big ones to make 45. You don't need any smalls. And then we get into a few falses. You see right here, with two big blocks and three single blocks, you have 13 total meters of material, but there's no way you can get to nine because you're either at five plus three which is eight or you have to go to two big ones and you're already at ten so that's why we got false there and then again we have 53 singles and two blocks of uh, five we actually don't have enough material overall so we just don't have enough and then here covers the final scenario which is you just have enough small pieces to build the whole thing you don't even need five meter lengths <coughs> so this is one solution to this problem Again, the cool thing about writing code is there are a dozen ways to solve every problem. And actually, a lot of the times in interviewer in interviews, interviewers would ask you, okay, your code works, but what's another way you could solve that code? They're not just interested in seeing that you can write code checking if you can build bridges. They want to know that you have multiple attacks to solve problems. So if you coded this in another way, um, that's awesome. That's great. Uh, it c helps to know multiple ways to code things. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment letting me know how you would have done it or if you did it another way that worked for you. And uh, if you had any questions about what I did as well, go ahead and ask that in the comments below. Otherwise, that's the solution to problem 10. Problem 11. We want to add together four integer values, but if any of them are not unique values, they do not count towards the sum. Only numbers that appear in the parameters only once get counted towards the final sum. So you'll be given four integer parameters, and you want to add them all together, except if there are duplicates, they do not get to get added. If you'd like to attempt this one before we go through the solution together, I recommend pausing the video now. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and take a look at the solution. So to start this one, we're going to define a function called, I'll call it unique sum. You can call it whatever you want, A, B, C, and D. We're going to grab four parameters, just four letters, and we're going to start by setting the sum that we're going to output equal to zero. And I'm just going to use Python's not equals to, the exclamation mark equals, and check if a is not equal to all of the other values to C and D and if that is true then the sum gets added to itself and A so this is really saying sum equals sum plus A this is just Python shorthand for adding itself to adding this value to itself and then I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this code for B, C, and D and start modifying it. So I, some people I'm sure are going to uh, 
come up with cool loops and uh, and find ways of passing a parameter through and doing the same code four times. I mean, that's kind of the point of Python. I'm just doing what uh, works for me and what I'm pretty confident would be a quick solution. A big thing I've found in interviews is Python questions from interviewers a lot of times are not immediately checking to make sure you wrote elegant and clean code. You always have time to go back and iterate and revise code. They want to see you think on your feet and they want to see you take problems and uh, do your best to solve them on the fly. So, so right here we check that A is not equal to B, C, and D, and then we add A. B is not equal to A, C, and D, add B. C is not equal to A, B, or D, add C. And D is not equal to A, B, or C, add D. And then the last piece is you just return the sum. And that should do it. So if we go ahead and let's just, let me grab a few scenarios. If we go ahead and print out a few of these, we can look at our solutions. So right here in this first one, one, two, three, and four, no duplicates. So them all add together is 10. In the second scenario, you can see they're all duplicates. And so we actually get zero because we don't add anything. Then in the following one, you see we've got a couple of twos that shouldn't get counted. So we're just adding nine and five for 14. And then we have two ones on the ends that are duplicates. So we just add two and three for five. And then another one with no duplicates and we get 22. Again, there are um, ways to cut down on the total amount of code shown in here. Um, but this method works. And if you have another method that works, that's awesome. Go ahead and tell me about it below uh, or ask any questions you have in the comments. Otherwise, that's the solution to problem 11. Problem 12. Given three integers as parameters, check to see if they are all spaced out. Return true if they are all at least three or more away from each other by value. And also return true if two or more numbers are identical, but still spaced out by three or more from other values. So you're given three integers as parameters. Duplicates can still count as spaced out because even though those two numbers aren't more than three away from each other, they're the exact same number. And so for this scenario, that's going to count. So if you'd like to attempt the problem before we go through it together, I recommend you pause the video now. Otherwise, we'll take a look at the solution. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start by just defining a function that I'll call distance checker. And let's go ahead and pass in three integer parameters and let's do the first easiest check which is if we don't have any duplicates let's check the absolute value which is abs in python of a minus b and let's check if that difference is greater than or equal to three and we can do this a couple times and we'll do a minus c and then we'll do B and C's difference. And it, that this is the easiest scenario. It's just none of them are duplicates. So you can return true if they all are at least spaced out by three. And then the next scenario would be if A is equal to B and the difference between, you can say A or B minus C, um, doesn't matter. But as long as that spacing is greater than or equal to three, then we're still spaced out, right? So we're saying, okay, two of them are identical, and then the third one is more than three away from it. And so we need a few or conditions in here because the other scenario could be C is equal to B, but then we would need still the difference between A and C to be greater than three. Or the last scenario is A is equal to C, and then the difference is we would need the difference between B and C to be greater than three. And we could return true for that scenario. And the last scenario is an easy one, is just A is equal to B and A is equal to C. And so if they're all the same, even though it seems silly because they're not really spaced out, they're just the same number, we're still gonna return true. And then any other scenario, we return false. 
So to test this, I'll go ahead and pull in some distance checking scenarios. And let's add one in here that I just thought of where they're all the same. Three, three, three. Okay, so I'll go ahead and run this and we'll take a look at the solutions together. Run if else return. Oh, that should say return false, not just false. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got here. One, one, and seven. So we have two duplicates and then a number that's more than three away. So we get true. Then one, three, and five, those are all within two of, uh, of each other. So we get false. 1, 3, and 19, even though 19 is way out there, 1 and 3 are, are too close. So we get false. 1, 7, and 21 just spaced out nicely, and we get true. And then 3, 3, and 3, they're all the same, and we get true. So this is how I chose to do this. If you went about it another way, that's cool. Go ahead and drop your solution in the comments. Um, if you had any questions about this problem or any of the problems you saw today, don't hesitate to ask. Um, otherwise, thanks for checking out the channel. If you found it useful, uh, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. And if you want to see something in particular, just let me know. Send me a message and I'll try to get a video out on that. So as always, thanks for checking out the channel and good luck with your code. Thanks. Bye.